Hello, ladies and gentlemen. I just wanted to let you guys know that tonight we're going to be taking a look at Dark Souls, the board game. This is going to be an incredible experience. Just give me a few minutes to set this up. Two hours later. All right, and we're back, folks. I got the game all set up now, and thankfully I didn't have to use the instructions, but I don't know how to play, so let's go ahead and consult the instructions now. What the fuck? You're here. Hello ladies and gentlemen and welcome back to another brand new episode of Honest Opinion. You know I never thought I'd see the day where the next game that's up for review is what jacks up my upload schedule. It's weird, usually life gets in the way, like school and work and stuff like that. But anyway, with all that in mind guys, you have my apologies for the delay in this video's release. But let's just go ahead and get down to business, shall we? Is this game any good and is it something I could recommend to you? Let's find out. Dark Souls is a 3D RPG that some consider to be open world, and honestly I'm not sure if I 100% agree with that, but I can see the argument. It was developed by From Software and was released for the Xbox 360, PlayStation 3, and PC back in 2011. For this review, I'll be looking at the Steam version, more specifically the Prepare to Die edition, which has all the DLC included. Before I played this game, I had very little hands-on experience with any game of the franchise. I do have Dark Souls 3 on PS4, and I've actually had it for a while, but I've only completed like maybe 5% of the game, and I refuse to play it alone. It wasn't until my old friend Sean, or Everlasting Gobs, donated me this game that I decided to go ahead and give the franchise a real chance. I had honestly only heard of this game by concept, meaning its reputation for being one of the hardest gaming franchises ever made. Dark Souls has a minimalistic plot. Historical events in this world and their significance are often implicit and left to the player's interpretation rather than fully shown or explained. Most of the story is given to the player through dialogue from the characters in the game, flavor text from items, and world design. Vague does not even begin to describe the story. I honestly had to consult external media to gain some sort of perspective of what the story is about. Even after doing so, I still don't find the lore very interesting. And the fact that the game doesn't even bother to tell you anything just frustrates me even more. If you're going to have a story, then tell it. Don't leave it up to me to find random things and just figure it out. The gameplay places you in control of a customizable character who is a typical silent protagonist. It's up to you to do something in order to achieve something and beat the game. Okay, enough acting passive aggressive here. Fuck this game. This game is ridiculously hard and unforgiving. It doesn't hold your hand, it gives you no instructions, and it certainly doesn't know the meaning of mercy. It hates you. It hates everything that you are and everything that you stand for. After the opening cutscene, which lasts for probably less than a minute, you're immediately thrown into this world with no context, no goals, no objectives, no nothing. The only way to get some hints as to what you're supposed to do next is talk to a random NPC around in the area and hope to God that they are not vague, which guess what? happens frequently. I had to consult forums and guides to give me an idea of where to go, otherwise playing by myself with no assistance proved pretty damn pointless. I was going into areas that I wasn't even supposed to visit until later in the game and got my ass kicked every step of the way. No matter where you go or what you do, you will continuously encounter enemies. But that's not the bullshit part, not even close. Your character is a total pussy. Until you can level up and acquire powerful weapons, you will die a lot in the beginning of the game. In fact, what am I talking about? You're going to die repeatedly over and over again despite whatever level you are and whatever weapon you have. The only way to level up is by spending souls that you collect throughout your adventure. Souls are collected by killing enemies and bosses and using special items that grant you bonus souls. Not only do these things level you up, but you also need to use them to purchase items and weapons as well. Everything in this game costs souls. What kind of f***ed up world uses people's souls as currency? 
Dark Souls. That's the answer. As you progress, the Souls requirement to level up become greater and greater, as you would probably expect. You can only level up one attribute per level, and whichever one you choose is entirely up to you. Now, which one you should choose depends on the type of character that you select. I personally went with the Warrior, and I heard he was recommended to level up Strength, Endurance, and Vitality. So, I did just that. Strength is important as it allows you to use heavier weapons and armor, and Endurance is important because it allows you to equip more items without slowing you down in conjunction with allowing you to sprint longer. And Vitality gives you health. I'm not sure what the other ones do, but I'm sure they come in handy for other types of classes. And really guys, that's about all there is to it. The game encourages exploration and can be very rewarding for you to find something useful. But let's elaborate a little bit more on the bull- Ooh. I hate this game. I hate it very, very much. I'm all for a game that doesn't hold your hand and encourages exploration, but what I'm not all for is a game that starts out way too difficult and only gets harder. What I'm not for is a game that doesn't even have the decency to tell you what you're doing and why you're doing it. There are games out there that are hard, you know, like Ghosts and Goblins on the NES and Zelda 1 and 2, or if, we're, if you're looking for something a little bit more recent, how about the Ninja Gaiden series? Those games are hard, but then you have Dark Souls. This game's difficulty is so infamous that the name alone represents a difficulty setting, and I'm not sure if that's awesome or pathetic. You thought Ace Combat was hard? Dark Souls laughs at this game. This game caused me so much anguish and frustration that I smoked an entire pack of cigarettes in just a few hours. No game has ever made me do that. I've had the police get called on me for how loudly I was raging. My neighbors thought I was beating my girlfriend, and I'm not lying. To put things into perspective, allow me to share some examples. You remember how I said your character is a complete pussy? Well, that's because he or she cannot take a hit. One blow from an enemy has the potential to drain anywhere from a quarter to three quarters of your life bar. It all depends on the enemy and how devastating the blow is. You can avoid these by doing a roll, or you can use a shield to absorb most of the damage. If you die, <clears throat> or excuse me, when you die, you lose all your collected souls and humanity. Oh yeah, um, humanity is what you use to make your character full human as opposed to just being a zombie. While in human form, you have increased defense and you resist a certain type of status ailment. It also allows you to summon NPCs or real people to come aid you in a boss fight if you need them. Now back to my original point though, when you die, you lose all of your souls and all of your humanity. Now the game does give you an opportunity to retrieve them. However, you have to return to the original place where you died in order to accomplish this. Conceptually, that sounds pretty fair, right? Well, guess what? If you die in an area that's far away from your respawn point, then you may be in some trouble here because all of the enemies that you killed before are now respawned and you have to kill them all all over again. Keep in mind, a lot of these enemies can be a real hassle to deal with, and if you die on your way back to where you died the first time, all your souls and humanity are completely lost. Having humanity is very important because a lot of these bosses can be pretty unforgiving and having assistance is almost mandatory to beat one of them in particular. The game's difficulty is just plain absurd. The fact that I can wander around this world and end up in the wrong area is just not fun to me. If I have to look up a guide to figure out just where it is that I'm supposed to go, I think you overdid it just a little bit. It just feels like the game handicaps the player. It doesn't even tell you about additional abilities that your characters have, such as the backstab or the parry move. Stuff like that would have been really helpful to know in the beginning of the adventure and allow me to practice it as I go. It wasn't until the middle of the game where I figured out how to stab someone in the back, and I didn't even learn how to parry until the final boss. Gee, game, that would have been helpful to know ahead of time, don't you think? You have the ability to recover health with the use of Estus Flasks. You cannot purchase these, which I think is just straight up dumb. You can also replenish your health with humanity, but then again, you run the risk of losing it when you die. How many flasks you can have in your inventory all depends on the bonfire that you visit. Bonfires are basically this game's save zone. It's here where all of your flasks are replenished, and it's where you can level up and do other things. How powerful the bonfire is will determine how many Estus flasks you can hold at once. To power these up, you have to do what is called kindling. 
but you don't get the ability to do this until later in the game. If another player is playing and they kindle a, at a bonfire that's close to where you are, then you will receive an additional flask per kindle that the other player does. That can come in mighty handy, I must say, but since Dark Souls 1 currently doesn't have a whole lot of people playing right now, I mean, there are two other installments, it won't happen often. Your Estus Flask can also be upgraded to make them more potent, but the problem is, is that finding the item to do so is rare. I was only able to do it twice. Your weapons and armor can also be upgraded. The more powerful the upgrade, the more resources it will require. That's pretty common sense. There are dozens of weapons in the game, so whichever one you decide to use and upgrade is entirely up to you. I started using the Drake Sword, and then I eventually switched to the Zwei Hander. After fully upgrading this bad boy, I felt like I could take on the enemies fairly, and the Drake Sword certainly helped make the game easier for me in the beginning. I would have liked to keep using it, but upgrading it is a colossal pain, and it can't be used with certain items that give it elemental properties, so... As powerful as it is, it's not really perfect either. As I mentioned previously, the game has the ability for players to play cooperatively. It's very handy when you're stuck on a boss, but with all great things, there comes evil things. What I'm talking about now is invaders. If you restore your humanity, you can be invaded by another player or even an NPC at any time. The invader's sole purpose, huh, see what I did there, in life is to kill you. There are uses for this, but I've noticed that people just do it to be assholes. Like when I got to the area called Anorlando, this place holds the hardest boss in the game, and getting and keeping humanity is not easy. Players know this, so they invade your game after you work so hard to get humanity so you can summon people for help just to troll you. This isn't so much a flaw with the game, more like an annoyance. Actually, you know what? It is a flaw. Because a level 5 player can be invaded by a level 100 player. That's bullshit. <gasps> In terms of variety, this game offers plenty of it. Each area has their own set of unique enemies and terrain. No place you visit will be like the others. While that can be refreshing, it's also annoying. Some areas you'll have to deal with enemies that cause poison, bleeding, or curse you. The thing is though, is you won't know until you get there, and unless you unlock the ability to fast travel from bonfire to bonfire, expect yourself to be doing a lot of backtracking to find an NPC that will sell you something to make the trip a little bit smoother for you. Or you can be just like me and say, f*** that and keep going. It's no secret that this game is hard, but surprisingly, the bosses are probably the easiest part of the game, especially if you have Havel's armor. Yeah, these two cocksuckers gave me a hard time, but eventually I prevailed. The rest of the bosses only killed me probably about two to five times each, maybe a little bit more, before I conquered them. I don't know, I just find it really odd that these bosses are deceptively easy, considering that the kind of label that the game has. As far as the graphics go, I gotta be honest, I think it looks bad. And no, I'm not saying that because I hate the game. I'm saying it because it just doesn't look like something you'd see on a PlayStation 3 or an Xbox 360. This game was released late into those consoles' life cycles, but this game looks like something out of a PlayStation 2. The NPCs' lips don't move when they talk, the backgrounds are lifeless and boring, the character models don't have any sort of detail to them, and not to mention, this game has a serious clipping issue, meaning that enemies can basically hit you through a solid object. And since your character is already a pussy, that's just one more nail in the coffin. The only compliment that I can give here is that the environments match the game's title. The game is called Dark Souls, and yes, the game is quite dark and it's full of souls, so bravo Bandai, bravo I guess. Ugh. The soundtrack, I'm not gonna lie, I really didn't pay attention to. I was too busy focusing on not dying to listen to it. The little bit that I did hear sounds impressive enough, but again, I wasn't able to appreciate it since I was too busy raging about how much I hate this game. In short, I really don't have an opinion on the soundtrack. In conclusion, f*** this game. I hate this game with every fiber of my being. However, there is a distinct difference of my opinion now as opposed to when I started. Either way, I do not like this game, but the difference is simple. In the beginning, I hated this game to the point where I could not see the appeal whatsoever. I was unable to fathom how anybody could possibly like it. 
now. I hate this game still, but at least I can see why people would enjoy it. This game offers lots of replay value and it's really directed for people who want more than your average gaming experience. I am curious to play the other games, but I refuse to play them alone. I'm sorry guys, but this game is not fun to me. If you want to play a game that doesn't hold your hand and encourages exploration, Play Breath of the Wild. At least that game tells you what you're doing and why you're doing it and what the stakes are if you fail. This is not a game for casual gamers like me. I went into this expecting a difficult challenge, but I still figured maybe I could have it beaten within 10 days and have the review done on time. Way to make me look like a liar, Dark Souls. All in all folks, Dark Souls to me is just not a good game. I know there's going to be people out there that's going to blow up the comments telling me how wrong I am and how stupid I am and how much I don't know what I'm talking about. I can assure you this, there is not a single thing that you can say that will make me change my mind. And I made sure I played this game from start to finish so nobody can say that I didn't give the game a chance. I did and I still don't like it. With all that in mind guys, I recommend you skip this game. It's just way too goddamn hard and annoying to bother wasting your time on. And that, folks, is my honest opinion. But now, I want to know what you guys think. Does Dark Souls look like a good game to you? Is it something that you could recommend to a friend? Please, leave all that and more down in the comments section below. I want to give another big thanks to Sean for donating me this game. I appreciate it, man, but never again, please. Anyway, I hope you guys are looking forward to the next video. We'll see you then. But until it comes out, you all have a great night and take care. Hey guys, thank you so much for watching my video. If you liked it, be sure to let me know down in the comment section or by hitting the like button. And also be sure to share this with your friends and maybe even take a look at some of the other stuff that I've done. I work really hard on this channel, so every bit of support would be greatly appreciated. Anyway, I think I've taken up enough of your time. You all have a great night and take care.